Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech. And if you just picked up a new Mac or maybe you're setting one up for the first time, whether it's new to you or used or something else, or it could be a new M4 MacBook Air like this one, a MacBook Pro, Mac Mini, iMac, Mac Studio, or Mac Pro, I thought I'd share with you 10 or more tips and tricks or first steps when setting up a new Mac. Now you could have already set it up. Maybe you're at the home screen, you're at your main desktop. Let's go ahead and take a look at how you can transfer your data first, and then we'll go on to customization. Now, if you've already set up your Mac, there's a couple things you can do in order to transfer your data from an old Mac to a new Mac. I did this in a separate video and I'll link that in the description, but you can use the tool called migration assistant in order to set it up, go into your finder, which is this icon here go to applications and under applications, go down until you see utilities, go into utilities and within utilities, you'll see migration assistant. If you go into migration assistant, you can then transfer information from another Mac to this Mac or from this Mac to another. You can do that wirelessly wired via Thunderbolt, USB-C, or just over Wi-Fi wirelessly. Once your Mac is set up and you're at the desktop, you're ready to get started customizing. Now you may have transferred over everything and you have all of your applications the way you want, but if you don't, you'll want to customize quite a few things, starting with the dock. The dock is going to be filled with applications, some of which you'll use and some which you won't. If you want to get rid of them, click and drag it right off the dock until it says remove and let go again, do the same on maybe a couple apps clean it out however you'd like, and then you can let go and they disappear. If you want to get them back, you could go into your launch pad or into finder with your applications and then just click and drag and bring down what you'd like to have there. So it's real simple. You can get rid of most, or you can have many more other than what we have here. So that's how I would recommend customizing it at first. The next thing I would do is I like to have some effects here. Now this may not be important to you, but if we go into system settings and go to desktop and dock, I typically turn on magnification. If I do that here, you can adjust how big or small it is. Once you hover over one of the applications in the dock, it zooms in to let you know what you're hovering over. It just indicates a little bit better. You can make that very large as you hover over it or barely noticeable. It's completely up to you and whatever works best for you. Of course, we can increase the dock size, make it larger or smaller. So you can do that here. If you want it really small or large, you can even put it on the left side of the screen or the right side of the screen as well. So whatever works for you, you can go through the customizations. You can also resize it by just grabbing some of these lines here, dragging up and down, and you can resize the dock that way. So typically I just leave on magnification. And then the last thing you could do here is hide the dock. So you'll see here where we have the option to hide the dock automatically or show it. If we turn this on, it will disappear. If we hover over the bottom, it will come back up. We can do a key command to do this as well. Command option D here. We'll make it show command option D again, will hide the dock. So you've got a lot of keyboard shortcuts that do the same thing as well. Now, once you've fully customized the dock, you've got it how you want. And these are also applications that are shown recently here, but you could drag in something you want to stay regularly into your dock. Once you've got this all customized, the next thing I would recommend is customizing either your mouse or a trackpad. So we'll go down to where we have mouse and keyboard. So we've got our trackpad here, and this is something I customize as well. For example, we've got tracking speed, of course, click medium firm. You can adjust that in the force as well. But also if we go to scroll and zoom, we've got some options as well. If you don't like the scrolling with two fingers up and down, you can reverse that. Maybe you're coming from windows and it feels unnatural to you. You can turn that off. Also, if we go under more gestures, we have a few different things as well that I use. You can swipe between different screens if you have them open, or maybe we have multiple applications open. We can swipe up and there's a lot of different gestures here. However, one thing I would recommend has to do with point and click and three finger click. So we have tap to click. So if that's something you're used to, double tapping, maybe just with your finger, instead of clicking the trackpad, you can turn that on. And then secondary click is another thing I would customize. For example, click or tap with two fingers. So if you click with two fingers, it acts as a right click on a windows computer, or you can hold option and click. It's the exact same thing. You can also have it click in the bottom right corner or bottom left corner. One other feature I would recommend enabling when it comes to the trackpad specifically is if we go into accessibility under accessibility, scroll down to where we have pointer control and within pointer control, go to trackpad options within trackpad options. I would recommend turning on use trackpad for dragging. And then below that click on without drag lock and change it to three finger drag. 
This allows us to use three fingers to just place our three fingers down. Then we can drag around any window. So we can just drag it around like this, let go. If we use one finger again, we go back to normal, use two fingers, we can scroll. So this is great, just use three fingers to drag. It makes things a lot easier once you learn all the gestures. Now, of course, once you install everything, you're going to want to go and install your favorite apps. And one app I would recommend if you want to regularly maintain, protect, and optimize your Mac is from today's sponsor, Clean My Mac. If we go into Clean My Mac here, and Clean My Mac is an excellent tool for maintaining and protecting your Mac. I've been using it for years. It's a user-friendly way to manage your storage and keep your Mac as new as the day you bought it. Smart Care simplifies the management of your Mac by providing a comprehensive overview of the space taken up on your Mac. It identifies potential threats, optimizes performance, and checks for clutter. Cleanup helps you easily locate large mail attachments, cached files, and system leftovers. My Clutter highlights duplicates of photos, videos, documents, and allows you to compare them before deciding whether to delete them. You can also view old and large files in a straightforward manner, enabling you to make informed decisions about what you want to remove. Furthermore, Clean My Mac has a built-in Moonlock anti-malware engine, which scans for threats and vulnerabilities and easily removes any it finds. The built-in assistant provides an overview of your Mac's health and files and offers guidance on the next steps you should take. You can also find Clean My Mac in the Mac App Store. To keep your Mac tidy, consider using Clean My Mac as I do. Take advantage of their 7-day free trial and use my code ZOLOTECH to get 20% off. Explore the link in the description below for more information, and I highly recommend it. Let's go ahead and close this out here, and the next thing I would recommend is going into your display settings. Under system settings, if we go down to displays, something I always do is I turn off true tone. Now you may actually like this feature as it makes the whites on the display look paper white. However, if maybe you're creating art, maybe you're using this for photo editing or video editing, you'll want to turn that off as it sort of makes the display the wrong white balance. So that's something I typically disable on any device I'm using, whether that's my iPhone or my Mac. Also, you want to customize the resolution or the space that you're using. So you'll see I'm using a custom one right now, but if I want more space on the screen, I can do that. You'll see I can scale this, change the resolution, and make it huge. Or if we bring this back here, we can just bring it back to whatever resolution we prefer. So you can see what it looks like there, and then you can scale it based on what you use. So that's something I recommend using depending on how much space you need on your display. And also this can change if you're connected to an external display. Now, if you're using a MacBook, I would recommend going into your battery settings and make sure they're set up how you'd like. Now, I never use low power mode, so I turned it on never, but that's really up to you. But you can enable this to be on always, only on battery, or only on a power adapter. Typically, this will limit the overall power or processing speed, though, so I wouldn't recommend it for everyday use. If we go down to the bottom, we've got options as well, and within options, we have a few different things you can check. Wake for network access, optimize video streaming while on battery, and this will help you increase your battery life. So you'll see it says your Mac will stream high dynamic range HDR videos in standard dynamic range. So even if you don't like HDR video, you can enable this, or if you want HDR video, you can keep it disabled. Also, you'll see a couple different options that you'll want to customize based on your use. So slightly dim the display on battery or prevent automatic sleeping on power adapter when the display is off. So typically I'll just leave these how they are by default, but you may want to customize that. Finally, within battery health, we've got the little eye here. We can go into this, you'll see your battery condition, maximum capacity, and I would recommend leaving it on optimized battery charging. This means that if you regularly leave it connected to whether that's a studio display, a monitor, or something else powering it, it will manage the battery and typically hold it at about 80% or so. Then it will charge up sometimes if needed and then discharge it a little bit. So you'll see that here and it will charge based on your usage. It can learn how you use it and then optimize the battery for you. Now, when it comes to optimizing or organizing your desktop, you'll see that I have something enabled called stacks. If I click on images, you'll see that they expand out and this is a great way to organize a little bit better. So what I typically do is go into view and then enable that. You'll see stacks. If I turn it off, this is what your desktop would look like. If you wanted to auto sort of organize everything, enable use stacks, and then it's cleaning it up a little bit. Of course, you have other optimizations here as well. Group stacks by, kind, shared by, date last opened, 
as well as date added, modified, created, and tags. So you can customize that however you'd like. Another thing I would recommend enabling if you didn't already when you set up your Mac is go into system settings, go down to privacy and security, and scroll to the bottom. At the bottom, we have File Vault. Now, not everyone enables this, but this is something I would enable as it secures the data on your disk by encrypting it automatically. It encrypts and decrypts automatically, and then it's enabled, and you can have everything really secure. However, you would need to make sure that you have your recovery key. If you don't have that, you may lose your information if you're trying to get back in. So if you do forget things like that, make sure you write that down as it will give it to you at the time of setup. One other thing I would customize is how you control your Mac. If you have many windows, Apple can help you sort of manage that if you have a bunch of things on your display. So if we open up Safari here, maybe we'll open up Clean My Mac. Then maybe we'll open up, well, let's take a look at maybe we'll open up something simple such as Calculator. And we have a few different things here. If I swipe up with four fingers, you'll see that it sort of spreads out and we have different options for that. If I go to the bottom left corner, it does the same thing. If I go to the bottom right, it goes to the desktop. That's actually called hot corners. And then we have something called mission control. If we go into our settings again, within our settings, if we go to desktop and dock, within desktop and dock down at the bottom, we have hot corners. Under hot corners, we can then assign what we want it to do when we go into each one. So you'll see in the bottom left, you can have it go into mission control, your application window, your desktop, notification center, or other things here. I typically only use two, mission control and desktop, but you can set this up for however you'd like. And I've used this for years. If I need all of my applications just to show me what's already open, I can do that. And if I need to get to something quickly on the desktop, I can just slide to the right here and then see the desktop. It makes using this much easier for me. So there's lots of things like that. And you don't have to use mission control or any of those things, but it is something that I use regularly and I think helps sort of manage everything. There's also the option for stage manager, which is a little bit newer. I don't personally like it, but I know a lot of people use it and that helps them organize as well. So you can click back and forth, go back and forth into what you're using. But if you want to use that, you can enable it or you can use hot corners, mission control, and there's a lot of customizations here. Now, if you haven't already and you have multiple Apple devices, I would recommend going into your settings and then going to your name at the top. Under your name at the top, if you scroll down, you'll see iCloud. Go into iCloud. And within iCloud, this will give you an overview of what you have for iCloud. I actually have four terabytes of storage because I use a lot of it, but this is something I use regularly. And I would recommend if maybe you have a lot of files and you want things to sync across devices, it can be just your messages. It can be your mail. It could be your passwords, or it can be your files. If I go into finder, I have a bunch of things saved into iCloud. So in my iCloud drive here, it's very easy just to go in and see files that I've saved on my Mac maybe a new thumbnail for a video like this, I can grab that on my iPhone as well. So it makes it a little bit easier. And then of course you have things such as private relay, which I typically recommend as well, that goes along with security. So all of these things I would recommend enabling, but you could customize this based on what your needs are, whether that's syncing notes, FaceTime, numbers, or anything else. So I highly recommend customizing this. I typically turn on everything and then just have all of my data sync across devices. Now, finally, maybe you have a couple different windows open and you want to automatically have them fill the screen. Thankfully, with the latest version of Mac OS, you can just click and drag the top here and then move it to the side or three finger drag and do the same thing. So it will snap to whatever you'd like and then you can bring it in or out and then have it automatically fit to the area you want it to sit in. So just move your mouse over the top and you can scroll up and down, drag and drop, and then you can resize it here as well. So you'll see if we bring this back over to the side, it resizes. And if you grab this line here, it will auto resize, just like if you're on an iPad. So that's everything as far as setting up your Mac for the first time. Of course, there's a lot of other tips and tricks. And if you'd like me to cover those maybe in a separate video where there's more advanced tips, let me know in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>